Hi, Maria. How are you? Hello, I'm good. And you? I'm very well. Maria is joining us from Brazil and she runs a business accelerator company. Is that right? Or? Yes, that's right. A business accelerator. accelerator company. For women. For women. We okay. Accelerator uh, business run, uh, women business owner companies. <laughs> so Maria runs business accelerator company for women. Maria, do you want to talk a little bit more about yourself and what exactly do you do? Yes, uh, of course. Uh, I'm Maria Clara. Actually, now I'm talking from Recife, the, in the northeast part of Brazil. And uh, first, thank you for interviewing me. I'm so happy <laughs> to, to talk with you. And uh, b -Lab is the name of my company. Actually, to understand a little bit better, I will make, uh, I would like to make a transport to the future. So now we are into 2030 and we have gender equality. Uh, women are in the same as men. And I, I, I do not fear anymore to walk in the streets. So let's go back to 2020. 2020, I, instead of paralyzing, I, I stood up and I'm, I'm running this business because I believe we need to achieve uh, gender equality as soon as possible in Brazil. That's why we are working uh, with uh, Accelerator Women Business and also I have a project on uh, developing virtual reality tools for reducing uh, the unconscious bias that we have. I, I have this future vision that we have gender equality and women earn the same as men and then we are free and we don't we don't fear anymore walking the, the streets. We have a little big gender gap here in Brazil and a wage gap and that's why I'm running the labs business because we believe that we need to accelerate this diverse and inclusive future as soon as possible. Yeah, very true. Very true. So, Maria, do you want to a little bit talk about your journey and if somebody helped you in your journey or something helped you, can you talk about that? Yes, yes, yes. I grew up in a really small town uh, in the countryside of Brazil and it was a, it's a, a really small town but really uh, with so, so much violence. So, it was really common to, to see women raped and oppressed but my mother she and my grandmother they were really strong women and they really taught me how to be very strong so <laughs> my mom she, my yes my my grandmother she's a um, she she run also a business not now <laughs> she's retired already but also my mom she's a educator so I grew up in, inside of the school. So throughout my history, there have been several situations that I, I had this inspiration by women. Uh, although I, I joined an electrical engineer course, so it was really so many men. And, but so many times I felt that I was not taken seriously because I was a woman. A woman. And that's why that I started to think we need to change this reality by promoting women engineers. And that was my first job. I founded a women engineering group in my university. And then we started to, to bring balance to our engineer course because there is, there is uh, still a lot of erasement and judgment and prejudices. So that's why I started to to bring this revolution. <laughs> I started the Women's Engineering Group by IEEE and promoting women engineers and scientists and inspiring girls around the world. Uh, it was really my first desire to change my course and I, I really wish we could bring balance into my engineer course. And I really felt that I had these responsibilities because I was raised by strong women and then I needed also to see this in my course in the technology field. And in the next year, uh, in 2018, I had the opportunity to volunteer in the Philippines. And so I lived there for a year and it was really nice because I lived with 17 girls from different nationalities, from 12 different countries. And there, uh, just uh, uh, 
I felt that uh, I needed to learn and to improve my empathy skills and I, I learned so much about uh, how, how the cross-cultural perspectives are so important to build this future that I want and, and uh, still when, when I was still in the Philippines, Marcela Fuji, that's oh, today my business partner, she called me asking to co-found the, the business here in Brazil and then I really freaked out because I thought, how come I am the Philippines? How come I can, I can have a business in Brazil? It's not possible. And then I was 21 years old. I, I was too young and then how come? And, but then she said, you can do it. So I think she she's the one that really it's pushing me to, to, to do the, all these things. And then I, I really uh, went in, <laughs> really jumped in the business and where we are still until now, almost three years now. And then the, I think the puzzle was assembled. Uh, uh, when I returned to Brazil, I was undertaking social impact business and it's not easy. It, it was not easy to to I went back to Brazil because we have so many problems here and I, I I thought it would be easier if I lived in some developed country or something like that but I saw that we have to to solve Brazilians problems if it's not me who are solving this problem who it will be uh, I need to be in my country change the reality of my community and that's more or less how I, I, I get onto <laughs> where I am now. I am I I am really moved by changing this Brazilian reality. Oh, you're doing a fantastic job. I, I really appreciate whatever you're doing for your country and for women in your country. Uh, so tell me, have you missed out on any opportunity just because you were a girl? I believe more than I can imagine because we have so many so many cognitive bias that are so intrinsic to our in our society in our culture that's difficult to recognize and I I, I, I can name some opportunities that I missed but I think it still have a lot more and since I was a really a child when I was six I remember that I used to fight a lot with the boys in the school because they didn't let me play soccer and you know that Brazil, we, we love soccer. Yeah. And I am the only, I have two brothers, so I'm the only girl. And then I, I love to play soccer, but the boys, uh, they didn't let me play. And then I, I needed to, <laughs> to, have, to be fierce and to create a girls soccer team. But uh, since then I felt that, come on, how come? I can play soccer too and when I was I think about eight uh, I started to, to fight because I started to do karate uh, it was a karateka and then it was only me I, I was the only girl and then my, my dad was so worried uh, oh, you, you cannot play karate because you are a girl and then I know I can play karate <laughs> come on I love <laughs> I love to do martial arts and I felt that my, my parents they were afraid about I losing my femininity because I was playing soccer or was playing karate and I think uh, I, I, I don't know from where I, go, I was really strong to say no I will do karate and then I will play soccer. Maria do you have a mentor or someone you look up to? Yes, uh, Marcella and Christian that are my business partners are my mentors as well and uh, they are uh, so they, they have so ex so much experience uh, they are around the 50s so they are really looking up me <laughs> and I so great I'm so grateful to have them but I have a formal mentor her name is Isabella okay. she is mentoring me after I was selected on Harvard and MIT program so she's it was a mentoring program and she's really awesome and, <laughs> and but I have so many people around me that I keep me on fire you know they are really inspire me and that they I, there are so many engineers just talk 
and uh, as, as question and then see, prototype my future. So I think this is really, really important. Oh, great. So Maria, tell us, what would you tell the next generation of girls? Any advice for them? I think uh, I would tell I would tell them that you all have the responsibility to be an active voice, you know, and build a better future. So you need to be who you really are to make this change happen. Then the change starts in your community. Uh, you 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 really need to dream big, but start doing all the things that you want in your community. I think this is really really important. And I'm very optimistic for the future, about the future, and we need to start working together to see that this future, this desirable future that we want. True. And what is next for you, Maria? Um, I think uh, I, I I have this. Uh, what was the word? Let me see. Uh, just a moment. I, now my mind is glitching. <laughs> 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 and I think I have this privilege to be the one talking and encouraging so many girls around the world and I think you all need to use uh, the privilege that you have to to make some change happen you know I am a, a white woman and I know that we have so many bias and so many problems around there in the world so we need to use our privilege to to make something happen and that's why i'm working on all this stuff and then i'm really struggling to to see this change happen but because i'm using my privilege so i think we should all do this oh that is fantastic and i'm sure you will succeed you're still young and you have a long way to go maria thank you so much for being here if you are watching this interview, then please subscribe to my channel. I have amazing women like Maria from around the world talking on this platform. And it, it is so inspiring to hear about their stories. Thank you so much, Maria. Thank you so much, Julie. Really, you're doing awesome work. Thank you for this. Thank you. <laughs>